Hi, I'm Joshua Kemble, and this is vlog number 82. This is the vlog um, where I talk about quarterly stories, which is my graphic novel that I hand write, hand letter, hand ink, and then hand to you, hopefully someday in print. But until that day, it's available serializing online at quarterlystories.com. It's a very personal story to me about faith and mental illness, and this is the vlog where I discuss the process and the progress of creating that graphic novel on top of being a full-time illustrator, a full-time husband, a full-time art director, and a full-time father. So this video, I thought it would be nice to show how I go from an inked page to uh, doing cleanup. Um, in Photoshop. Once I pencil and then ink over my pencils, I have to go over my inks with an eraser to erase out all the pencils underneath. And that brush you're seeing is to blow away pencil shavings without affecting the inks above it. Then I scan it in um, fourths because I work on 19 by 24 pages. And even though I have an oversized scanner, um, it's only 13 by 19, so four scans basically will get the page, but then I have to tile them together in Photoshop. So what I do is um, have to grab each different piece of the four scans and then place them over each other. Um, I usually make one page that's 13, that's uh, 19 by 24. And then I basically, as you can see, I put it on multiply so I can see the inks through, make sure they line up, and then erase away the parts that overlap. And then once I'm done erasing away the parts that overlap, um, then I will merge the layers. And so that's what you see me doing right here, is merging the layers. Now the goal of doing this process in Photoshop that you're going to see as I'm erasing these pages, um, these parts of the pages and tiling, um, the importance of doing this process is you'll notice that a lot of the time you do inked comics, if you scan them in and you kind of maybe just use contrast or something um, on Photoshop and then you print out your pages, they don't look quite as good. They look kind of blurry, whereas on the screen they look really nice and crisp. Um, this method is actually a very four print method. It's basically a way of making your lines that you've scanned into bitmap lines that don't completely blow out your inks and also um, clean up uh, little smudges and dots that happen in the process of unfortunately working uh, physically. So basically, once again, like I said, I'm kind of tiling together all these different parts of the page. And it's really important that I do this accurately because otherwise you end up with distortions on the page. And so um, setting the layer that has the extra part multiply to line up your inks is a really good way to do that. And then obviously just deleting out the areas where there's overlap or redundancy. So once I have the page, I save it. And what I do is set up guides um, that you can see. And then I use the free transform tool to make sure that my lines that are supposed to be straight are straight and uh, they're at an exact 90 degree angle. Now I crop out the outside edges and get it as close to the interior lines and then resize the page and this is so that it's directly centered on the page and I don't have to clean up those redundant areas. So now my page should be all set, ready to go. I now convert it um, after you know, cropping and resizing it. I then convert it to grayscale um, because, you know, that gets rid of all the excess. I usually scan in CMYK because sometimes when you scan in grayscale instead of converting, you lose some really important details. So um, after it's here, I am converting it to grayscale and discard the information and I say yes. And then I do, um, a filter with Gaussian blur. Now the reason for this is really weird but a lot of the time you're gonna end up if you were to just go straight to adjusting your contrast um, you'll notice your lines don't look as smooth. If you blur them just slightly and then do curves without overlapping the center line in the curve because that will blow out your lines you end up with these really nice crisp black lines. So you do that and then you go to um, 
image adjustments and threshold and the threshold level at 128 and you'll end up with direct bitmapped lines. Now why you want your lines to be aliased when you print is that it prints a solid black and white. Anti-aliasing is something for the look of your screen and it you know helps lines to look less like a stepladder on your screen so for web that's great but for print it tends to print somewhat blurry because there are a bunch of different gray pixels on your page whereas aliasing your line makes it a solid black and a solid white and no colors in between so it really prints really nicely um, and I've been asked before even on photocopied mini comics how I get such solid blacks and this is the trick so then what I do um, with an alias, uh, you know, brush is um, I use the pencil tool and I clean up my blacks and whites by painting over and I zoom in very closely on my page so that I can see all the little specks and details that I didn't want to scan and I'm going in and literally like using white to paint over the white and black to paint over the black and so you'll notice it's just getting rid of these little minuscule spots especially in color filled blacks um, when you scan traditional inks it tends to make these weird little speckles that you didn't really see initially now one thing about this process is you're also going to see how cleanly you ink in reality because a lot of the time people will think they're inking very cleanly until it gets to clean up and when it gets to clean up, um, you know, they'll, they'll get to this point of going, wow, I should really re-ink this because it ends up taking more time to clean up than it would to actually make the artwork. But it actually makes you a more solid inker to go through this process as well. So once you've done this, if you were going to color your artwork, once you're done cleaning up, what you would do is use the magic wand tool um, with continuous checked so that you know when you select one color it selects that every color of that pixel on your image and then you would make a new layer and you would fill it with a rich black and then underneath it you would use that for your lines you'd block that layer and be able to color it underneath your lines so if i ever get to do um, get to doing an, a color photoshop image i'll show you that so at this point once it's all cleaned up I then take my image and I save it and then I resize it for the web and that's what I'm doing here so that for my web comic so the, the initial ones for my print comic this 72 dpi one will be for my web comic which you can check out at quarterlystories.com and that is very quickly um, in about eight and a half minutes how I clean up my comic pages. I hope this has been useful for you. And uh, if you liked it, please comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.